line until engine four. Um, so, has anyone, you know, uh, after the session, designed uh, a little level using, you know, the starting uh, starter components or something from outside the Unreal Engine? Uh, have you built something after, you know, after learning something from yesterday's session? And if you have, you you can share it uh, by sharing a screen here. Okay, so let's do a little bit of showcase. So no one is coming forward or can be. Um, shall we start now? Uh, yes, I guess. Let us begin with the session. Okay. So, again, I am sorry if my voice sounds a bit weird. I have a bit of a sore throat. And um, yesterday we learned how to design a, a whole level. Let me just share my screen. So, once again, when you open your Unreal Engine editor, you would be greeted with something uh, something like this. So now you won't have like you know an open uh, a blank uh, thing here. You now have created a successful project and it might be showing here. So for us, it is my project that we created. So select that and press open. Okay, it's easy. Now we'll wait a couple of uh, seconds to get Unreal Engine started. Now in this, I won't be able to cover too much again because of the time constraint, but I will go over uh, some very basic blueprints uh, like how blueprints actually work and um, a little bit about cinematics, right? So we are going to cover two uh, important things in this one. So open the level that you created yesterday. So in this in this uh, case, this uh, that would be our. Um, you know, my map. In my case, it would be my map, and uh, whatever you created yesterday, you would have. So, creating a new level is was fairly easy. File new level, and then we selected our default level, and then we uh, built this small house. We built uh, its interior. We had walls. We added, um, you know, these lamps with fire and. Uh, Cat statue by importing it, right? And it all came together really well. Now let's uh, age back the dynamic of uh, our, our lighting system again. <coughs> Oops. 
So position it. Select the sky. Refresh. Now everything is lighted again. Let's play. See, it's uh, same in, in, on the inside. When you go outside, everything is lighted. Right? And we need to build our lighting again because we changed uh, various elements that have disrupted um, you know, the previously calculated values. Okay. Let's play. Looks really good. Right? Now, uh, let's try to understand what our group is, right? So, when you go to third person BP here, or if you're, you know, uh, using first person template, it would be called first person BP. Uh, so, BP stands for blueprint. Open the blueprints folder and open the, you know, uh, First person character or third person character blueprint class. Right? Now you'll see some blocks of code basically, and these are all your blueprints. Right? And uh, none of this is actually something that we have written. This has every, you know, this has been provided to us by Unreal Engine 4. Right? So, how do we create our own character? Well, let's try to do that. Uh, let's try to, you know, build a, a, a sort of character that will um, chase our character when they see us. So, <clears throat> to explain it in Hindi, jab bhi hum unke visible radius mein aenge, jab bhi wo character hume dekh sakte hai, they'll start chasing us, right? So, first of all, create a new folder and name it uh, character enemy. Let's just call that enemy. Now go to this website called mixemo.com. So this is a website which provides character uh, 3D characters for um, your video projects, games, etc. It is owned by Adobe for free. It got recently acquired by Adobe. I'm just going to log in with my Google account in a sec. Just uh, log in in uh, Mexima.com. Right? Uh, I'll share the link in the chat box. So that if people who are late or who you know, have some issue with their internet, don't miss out on it. Uh, Mixemo.com. Now, go to the characters option. The characters menu. Now, you <clears throat> will be able to see a lot of, you know, characters, already built characters. So let's uh, find something that would suit our game. So, you know, let's take this mutant character and use this character. And on the right side, you can see that we have selected, uh, you can view the, you know, character. All right. Now, before going to the animations part, we need to download this character. How do we do that? Just press download. Pose is going to be T pose and format will be FBX. I have explained that yesterday also. Unreal Engine works best with FBX. So press download. <coughs> Downloading asset. I'm going to wait for a while. Okay, it has uh, downloaded. Now, let me just check where it actually is. It's in the downloaded folder. Unreal Engine, File. Um, okay, sorry. Add New. Or wait a second. Um, okay, so press Import. 
right? We are not uh, going to click on add new. We are going to click on import and that will open the file browser. Now go to the folder where your 3D model is downloaded. Select that and uh, press open. Wait for a second. Now, yesterday when we imported the skeletal, uh, imported uh, the cat statue, I told you it is a static mesh, right? The static mesh are something that won't be interactable or if it is, then it is not going to be player control. For example, a wall, right? So you cannot control a wall of a building in a game, right? That is all static mesh, table, chairs, etc. In this case, this is a skeletal mesh because you know, we want it to be uh, moving around or we want it to be able to interact with our player, with its environment, etc. Now, select import. Wait for a while. Okay, this process might take a bit uh, longer. If you're, if you're working from a hard drive or uh, some, like instead of a solid state drive, just like in mine. Okay. So open the you know skeletal mesh file and we can actually see our uh, you know scary mutant enemy here. Wow, that's actually really awesome. Right now I uh, want animation. I have the character, but I cannot just simply you know. Put it in my scene. So when I press play, I go outside. This isn't going to do anything, right? So we need animations for it. <coughs> press right click, new folder, animations, right? Okay. So open this animations folder and let's go back to our Mixamo website. Now press animations tab and uh, let's see what animations are available. First of all, I need a basic walking animation. So mutant walk looks uh, good. You can select various uh, parameters from the right side and this actually makes it really easy. So when I select it in place, uh, the animation will you know, continue to loop, continue to play, but the character will stay in one place. It won't change its location. So select that. Um, yeah, this sounds like uh, good. So press select download. Now it will present you the download settings. 30 frames per second is okay. And uh, skin, just select without skin. Okay, because we have the skin and everything when we downloaded our character model. Okay, now we're just downloading the animation. Okay, we have it. Press it, uh, select import again. Go to the downloads folder. There it is, mutant walking.fpx. Open. Now, Unreal Engine knows you're importing an animation, right? So, first thing it asks is okay, you're importing an animation. What skeleton is it related to? Right? So, we actually imported our own skeleton when we imported our character model. It built a skeleton for us. Okay, so select the mutant underscore skeleton and press import. Now when you save it, right, control shift S or save all, double press to open it. We can actually see our mutant moving. Pretty cool, right? Now, when I open that, uh, open this up, and I can uh, press skeleton so that I can see my skeleton. So there is, uh, on the left side, you can see there are so many bones, right? And, I can, and you can actually move uh, and change properties of these bones. 
don't do that but i'm just saying that's a possibility if you select animation on the right uh, bottom right you will be able to see all the animations for this particular you know character model and physics is uh, another thing so physics is basically how a particular bone will react with the load so right so that's all all the things that are being imported automatically for us so the engine makes you know the developers life a bit easier okay now we have our first animation let's uh, quickly add more animation right so we are going to add running <laughs> without skin download you can ask your questions uh, any time in between all right okay it's downloaded select my skeleton info okay now now what i'll have to do is um, Okay, now you can close Mixamo. Once you have all your, um, once you have all your animations that you want for your game, you can stop uh, using Mixamo.com, right? So go back to Unreal Engine where you have imported all your animation, and you can view your uh, animations by double clicking on them. All right. Now. Press right click, animation, and there would be an option called blank space. Create that and uh, select that and select your skeleton that is mutant underscore skeleton. Open it up. Now it has created a blank space class for you. Okay, what this actually does, I'm going to explain it to you in, in a second. But before that, first of all, go ahead and create that. Right? I'm going to call it mutant underscore BS. So BS stands for blend space. The blend space is basically a graph showcasing uh, two axes. One would be direction and one would be speed. And uh, okay, I guess we forgot one more animation. I'm just going to quickly head over to Mixamo.com and I'm going to download one more animation which I'll, uh, you know, the idle animation, right? So I'm going to type in mutant idle. I'm going to download this idle animation. So when our character would not be, you know, moving and chasing us, it would be. Uh, Performing this animation. Go to import, select your animation, select your skeleton. Press import. Okay. Now we have everything. Okay, let's uh, move forward. We have created our blend space. Expand the you know left side of the window a bit. I hope it is visible. Okay, it is. All right, so we have selected our skeleton. I can see my animation of you know, our character in the front. So what I'm going to do is I am going to okay, where, okay so here it is it says access settings and there is a horizontal axis that is the x axis so I'm going to name that direction and it will go from 0 to 100 right so minimum value axis value would be 0 and maximum would be 100 
<coughs> and the vertical axis would be speed. It would go from uh, zero to let's say 350, right? Oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's move it up to 600. Right. Awesome. Now save it. Now select the idle animation uh, from the content browser in the right bottom and drag it in the middle, like bottom middle. Right. Now select walking and uh, put it in the in the middle of the graph and then finally the run in the top. Just like that. So there are three points. One says idle, then it is walking and then it is running. So what does this actually mean? When the speed is zero, that is the y axis is zero. I can actually, you know what, set the direction from minus 100 to that would actually uh, make it a bit better. Now, see, when the direction is zero and speed is zero, we have idle animation, right? When the speed increases, the animation changes to walking. As you can see, there was a full transition. The, uh, there wasn't any, you know, sudden change in animation. It, transformed into that and then we if we further increase the speed it will change into right save it i am going to change one thing <coughs> in our running because apparently i forgot to select in place in this one so i'm going to click enable to motion Now open the blend space to finally see how your animation is actually looking. Looks really good. Save it. Save all. Now we have our blend space actually ready. All right. Now we need to create a character blueprint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate our third person BP. I'm going to name it enemy character right I'm going to open it and I'm going to select the mesh okay first of all I'm going to delete the camera because I don't want uh, the camera to follow right I <coughs> I don't want any of the input so select all the blueprints that you see here and press delete the file save Awesome. Okay, now select your mesh, right? This uh, little Android body here. And in skeletal mesh, select your monster, right? So, okay, so mutant. File it, save it. Now you might be confused that there was a whole proper animation going on when we had the, you know, basic UE4. 3D model, but now we don't have it because we don't have an animation class right now, right? So we are going to create just that. So go to back into our character enemy. Press right click on the mutant character. We get an M blueprint. We are going to name it mutant anim. That stands for animation underscore B B. B B means blueprint. Open it up. Now you might be seeing only one output pose, right? So you can only have one particular pose or one particular animation uh, in Unreal Engine 4. That is basically how this actually works. <coughs> so, but we have a bunch of animations, right? We have three of them. How do we actually, you know, incorporate three animations? If, if, if I only had to play only idle, I would have, I would have just have connected, you know, uh, mutant idle and connected this and 
Let's compile and call it a day. Right, but now I have three animations that you know basically uses uh, various conditions to work. How do I do that? Drag the result node and type new state machine. Right. So we are creating a new state machine. State machine is basically what defines an output pose. It's a whole uh, class of its own. Double press to double click on it to open it. And you have something like this. I think I'm going a little bit faster. If you have any problems uh, or, or do you think that I went too fast, please uh, ask questions. to take like a, a one minute pause. Okay, I guess nobody, I guess nobody is having any issues. That's, uh, that's really good. So, okay. let's uh, continue. So we have our entry point here, right? So I'm going to drag the drag an arrow out of it. You know, just select this little triangle and drag an arrow out by pressing your left mouse button and add a state. Call it movement, right? This will basically define our movement state. Compile, save. And also, I, we need to create uh, variables for that. So I'm going to create two variables. That's uh, really not that difficult. On the left side, where it says my blueprint, just uh, go under the variables tab, right? And click this plus icon, right? Select the variable that you just created. And uh, you can name, change the name here, change the variable type. So I'm going to name it direction. I'm going to call, uh, this is going to be a float. So float is decimal value, right? Then I'm going to select speed. I'm going to call it uh, this would be float also. Compile it, save it. <coughs> now open our movement state. Now uh, just drag your mutant underscore bs and select, you know, and uh, connect the result to the output of mutant underscore bs. Now it has two um, basically parameters that it requires. First is direction, because in our blend space, the direction was the x-axis and the direction, uh, uh, sorry, the y-axis was um, speed, right? Now it needs to know about what are the parameters of these two things. I'm going to connect my variables. Right, so direction with direction, just drag it and uh, you know, drag it into the graph, select get direction, and then connect the output of that variable to the direction node of mutant underscore BS. Yes. Compile, save. All right. Let's uh, move forward. So press compile, save, and now we have a working, uh, you know, animation blueprint. Go to your enemy character blueprint that we created earlier, right? When we duplicated uh, the third person character, 
go to the Adam class and select the one that we just created. So in our case, it would be mutant Adam underscore. Compile it, save it. Now go to the event graph, right? Uh, we haven't assigned values to direction and see, uh, speed. We just you know declare these variables and we use them. We haven't assigned uh, given it uh, given uh, them actual values. So what I'm going to do is go to the event graph of our enemy character blueprint. That is our character blueprint. Okay. I'm going to create two variables here again. I'm going to call it direction. And I'm going to call it speed. Right? Again, float. Variable type. Float, compile, save. Right? Now I'm going to press right click. I'm going to type event pick. So event pick node basically performs one particular action uh, a certain amount of time. So when the timer picks, it performs the action again. You can actually set, uh, you know, a, a variable. You know, a custom timer for that. So we are just going to use the default value of that. Drag the, you know, drag it out, drag the node out, and uh, type get um, calculate direction. Okay. Now we. Uh, okay, so there is nothing much more to do in our anime character. Go to our animation blueprint, right, and select the event graph. And now you can actually see the on the left side we have our animation being played, right. So drag the. There would be like if you go to event graph, there would be like a, a very small node which says event blueprint update animation. Let me just zoom so that you can see it clearly, right? So drag this out and type cast to enemy character, right? So what we're trying to do is we are going to refer to our enemy character class for the value of direction and speed. Compile it, save it. Now. get speed or you know, get after transform I'm actually skipping what it actually is called. So get actor transform. Okay, so just uh, uh, select get actor transform and press right click and it says split struct pin right so we have three we have now location rotation and scale so we are going to use that to calculate our direction i hope this is making sense because uh, it's a really complex uh, thing and uh, before moving forward before like actually you know going up a bit deep into the blueprint uh, uh, you know blueprint rabbit hole I'd like you guys to ask me questions about, uh, you know, level designing that I taught yesterday, or even about the animation stuff. And and I'd like to all of you guys who are using uh, their machines to do a hands-on experience right now, uh, you you could catch up, catch me up, with, you know, get on the same level. So uh, please create your animation blueprint. Please create your you know state machine. And meanwhile, I'll answer some questions.
um i think you um actually cast okay so whenever you cast to a particular uh, blueprint class that means you want something you are extracting something um okay so consider this as a, a way to declare the declare an object for for the particular class that you are casting to right so we are creating an object of enemy character class or we can uh, we are using that enemy character class to extract the info that we need what is the info that we need we need direction and speed right So I am guessing there are no more questions. Okay, so let's move forward, right? So what are we trying to do here? Is I need information. Okay, so uh, I did a little mistake. We didn't need these two variables to get our direction and speed for our class. Compile it and save. We don't need these. Uh, so I'm just going to select them and delete them. come back to our animation blueprint now uh, let me just uh, get this away with okay so we were here before so what i did was i dragged this out and i tied cast to enemy character right and there was a little blurred uh, node which says try get pod owner now drag the object node from casting uh, cast to enemy character block and connect it with try pawn get owners return value okay now drag uh, the return value out again and type get velocity right and uh, again type get actor rotation so these two three uh, things are uh, you know so velocity is the vector analog of speed so speed when we talk about speed is only in one direction right it is not a vector quantity but velocity is a vector quantity it has its x component its y component its z component right so we need to convert it to its scalar value how do i do that just type in vector length right so drag the execute node from any cast to any character block and type set speed and there we have it we are uploading uh, updating the value of speed easy right now we need to set the value of direction so i'm going to press right click and type calculate direction and uh, i'm going to put it right here so first of all it needs base rotation so i'm going to drag the return value of my get uh, actor rotation block and connect it with base rotation i am going to connect uh, my velocity so you, so you can drag your return node from velocity and connect it with velocity here in calculate uh, direction block now drag the set speed one and type set direction right and the uh, calculation direction the return value drag it and connect it to the sort like this compile it save it now we are actually you know uh, updating the value using our uh, our character blueprint so that was easy right
now compile it save it now all you need to do uh, to bring your character to life is character enemy and animations oh sorry not animations just uh, search for enemy character right? your blueprint class character blueprint class just play this is actually uh, our character is actually performing animation right you know what what we can actually do is we can increase the size of our character uh, to make it more scary so i'm going to increase the size to 3 3 3 increase the size of the capsule component as well 3 3 3 that might be uh, a little too much. Okay. <coughs> now when you press play, now we can actually see uh, the animation playing, and and this actually looks like you know a dangerous mutant that that might actually kill us. So, what do we do next? We have our animation, we have a, uh, our character, you know, we have brought it to life. Now we just need to give it the gift of sight. How do I do that? Uh, press add component while you're on the viewport. And uh, uh, search for, okay, now I'm typing search, okay. Uh, search for font sensing component. Compile it to see that we now have three circles basically. One is blue, one is yellow, one is green. So green is, I guess, the hearing. Okay, the blue is the hearing one. And uh, the green one is the, the vision one. So we are just going to use the vision. Let's do that. Now, in the details one, in the AI option, it says uh, peripheral vision angle. Let's just set it to something more realistic, such as 45. 45 is a good uh, peripheral vision angle, right? You can increase the sight radius so that it could spot the player from very far. You can see the code actually is increasing in size. So let's just uh, keep it at a good 2000. Compile it, save it. Now, <laughs> scroll down and under the events there are various events now on c pawn right there is an event called on c pawn on c pawn is basically when the pawn sensing component will sense will see a particular object right so press plus and we have our event it will automatically create one for us now track the pawn uh load from the pawn okay and type cast to third person character. What we are trying to do is we are checking if uh, the object or the pawn is third person character, and if it is, uh, drag the execute node and type AI move to. Okay. And drag the as third person character you know, uh, value to target after. Compile it, save it, save it, press play. Okay, for some reason it's uh, not actually working. Let's connect this to pawn. Press play. For some reason, uh, our character is not able to see us. Let's try to debug what problem that we are having, right?
okay so we might have made a, a small mistake while creating our animation blueprint uh, okay so i'm just going to go back to the character enemy folder and i'm going to open our mutant adam underscore bb i actually forgot that you can have uh, just one state we need to create an idle state and uh, uh, and then a walk uh, run state right so i'm going to go back to my state machine i'm going to drag the uh, entry uh, point i'm going to add a state i'm going to call it idle right and then i'm going to connect it with movement so just connect these two okay now uh, connect the movement one to idle so that you know they can go back and forth. They can go from idle to movement and movement to idle. Now double click to open idle and just drag in the idle animation and select uh, and uh, connect these two. Compile it. Go to movement. Movement one is actually fine. We just need to create our dead space. That that part is uh, fine for right now. But you ha might see the uh, these little arrow. Right, so open the first one which says idle to movement. Double click to open it. Now, what this uh, small function or what this small condition is actually doing is it, it's actually allowing uh, it's going to decide whether we should move from idle to movement or not. So, when should we move to idle to movement? When the speed is more than zero, right? So Float greater than float. I'm going to put in a condition and I'm going to connect this here. So when the speed is greater than zero, it can enter the transition. Now we need to decide when uh, when our you know movement idle should transition back to idle. Drag the speed again and now just Say float less than float. When it will be less than zero, it can go back to idle. Right? Compile it, save it. Now let's try um, playing. It's uh, for some reason still not working. Let's reduce the size of our uh, mutant back to one comma one comma one. So let's try to debug what's going on here. On sensing, right? Let's try this. Hmm. This should actually work. I am not sure what's uh, the issue here. Let's try debugging it once again.
if you have any questions about blueprints and other stuff, uh, you can ask because um, this is how usually these things go. You you know debug a lot. You try to figure out what's wrong. Basically, this should work. Or there is something wrong with a phone sensing a component might be. I'm not sure why it's uh, not working. <coughs> so let's see if the if we can debug this or not, right? Okay, so what we can do is we can actually look on a different project how, you know, what might have been uh, the issue here. So I'm going to open a completely different project. So it might take a while. Uh, you can ask your questions, or I can uh, move forward with the tutorial. Now that we have created our uh, animation, now you know this actually works, and uh, you can set the value of direction and speed to see actually how you know this is going to interact with our uh, scene here and stuff like that. Let's just wait for our uh, project to open. Um, okay, apologies, there might be some okay, so I need to share my screen uh, again. I hope it is visible. I think it is. So, I'm opening my uh, project, which is called Alone. It is a game that is going to be launched on uh, Xbox One and uh, Windows, probably Linux too. So let's just wait for a sec. Okay. Now, when you uh, okay, now let's uh, see how I'm actually doing things in this and try to replicate the same thing. Zombie. 
in this game i have a lot of enemy characters so i have eight type of uh, different models up until now and uh, i have various type of uh, zombies and you know other things so let's see pawn sensing on c pawn scout person Okay, so this uh, shouldn't be an issue, right? Let's open our enemy character again. Uh, let's type in get a reference to self. Pilot. Let's try again one last time. And if it doesn't, I'm just going to make do with this alone game here. You know, uh, take it as. Okay, so for some reason it's uh, it's still not working. All right, so uh, I'm just going to minimize this project, and uh, you'll have to study from this. So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, because I have a lot of animation in this one. Uh, it's it's a really complex project, and let me just uh, walk you through it. Go to zombie. Uh, this is the one by. So I have an animation blueprint here. Okay, now you can actually see that I have a similar uh, situation going on. So in the movement state, I have the walk and run blend space, right? And in the event graph, I am updating uh, the value. I am trying to get a pawn order. I'm getting velocity, getting rotation, and I am, uh, <coughs> sorry, I am calculating direction. Setting the value to uh, here, speed, and then uh, and I have also imported attacking uh, animation. So you know something like this, <clears throat> right? So it is going to attack the player when it reaches, uh, you know, when it reaches it. So I am you know uh, creating a boolean variable. Boolean variable have two values: one is true, one is false. So the default value is um, false here. It will be it will uh, set to true if it comes in a particular area, uh, the same as the player. So okay. So cast to third person character. I have uh, set my mock, uh, max walk speed and I, the same thing. AI move to this should actually work. On success, I am so on success means when it actually reaches the player, I am going to set my attacking value to true. I'm going to delay uh, a bit, so I'm going to delay. Uh, I'm going to uh, delay the whole process by 2.7 seconds because the whole animation of attacking me uh, is around that uh, you know uh, time limit. So when the animation will get over, the attacking while uh, the attacking uh, boolean variable will be set to false once again. So I hope this is clear. Right? So let's go back and, uh, you know, because I cannot believe that this is not working. This is one of the most simple implementations of uh, blueprints. And I am not convinced why this is not working. Um, let's read this one. Select uh, let's uh, movement, create a new state. I'm going to call it movement. Right? Same thing that we done before. I'm going to connect my blend space. Okay. I'm going to drag my direction. 
and I'm going to drag mine. Okay, compile it, save it, uh, then come back to new state machine. Now, event graph. Uh, Compile it, display, powers. Oh, it's still not working. But if it was uh, implemented properly and it was properly debugged, I am not sure what is the reason why it's, uh, why it's not working. I am 100% sure I'm setting the value of animations correctly. Um, anyway, let's move forward. So in this, uh, if you have done this correctly and if you have debugged what the problem is, I am sure that in your Unreal Engine version, it, sh it should be working correctly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the blueprint that you created into your, key, uh, into your scene. So in this case, it should be the security officer AI, you know, a zombie like that. And when you press play, right? So, just forget about all the user interface and the gun and everything. Now you can see what it actually does. It is going to follow me. And if it starts running and get it get outside of uh, its site, I can actually. Okay, so as you can see, both of these objects are chasing me. And this is how actually it works. So this is the most basic implementation of blueprints. Now we have get that out of the way. Let's focus on <coughs> one of the most uh, more important, uh, one of the most important part of the game, cinematics, or you know, movie making or whatever. All right. So considering you have designed your level and you want to create an intro scene, how would you do that? Well. There is an option called cinematics right here, and you can create a level sequence. Add level sequence, add level sequence, and uh, save it in the root folder. I'm just going to save it in the root folder, and I'm going to name it first sequence. Okay, Press save. Looks good, right? So people who have done video editing a little bit, you might be understanding what's going on. Uh, those who haven't, I'll just explain it. This is a timeline. So timeline is basically uh, describing what frame uh, will do what. And uh, right, so it will describe how the animation will go. It's basically a script. And on the left side, we'll have all our elements, right, and on the Top, we have save, search, uh, create a new camera, render this movie. So render this movie will render your animation sequence into a video sequence or an image sequence onto your computer. You can uh, change a lot of settings here. You can change the view options. You can change the playback option, right? So a lot of different things. Okay. Um, now, what I need to do is I want to showcase this little cut, right? So I'm going to, I, I want uh, the camera to open with this scene uh, and, and moving it from left to right, right? In a, in a really slow fashion. So what I'm going to do is in go to place actors and I'm going to type in camera, drag this out. And you can see, uh, you know, what the camera is actually recording uh, in the top right corner. Uh, rotate it. One easy way to control the camera is uh, pressing right click and selecting Pilot Camera Actor. And now you're actually viewing from the perspective of 
the camera. You can change its properties such as uh, what type of camera it actually is. So I'm just going to do that. Um, lens, you can change what lens it uses, uh, uh, film, color grading, rendering feature, etc., etc. Right? So you can do all of these things. Okay. Save it. I'm going to exit it to stop piloting. This looks like a good starting point for our movie. Right? Keep your camera actor selected. Go to this plus icon in your sequencer, actor to sequencer, and camera. Right? All what you can do is uh, you can actually search all your stuff that is in your level from here, which is not really as effective as it should, uh, you know, as uh, selecting it and then adding it from the top. Okay. So the camera cuts will showcase what, uh, when the camera is, when to switch a particular camera. So for example, you are uh, using multiple cameras in your scenes, just like in a movie, uh, you know, they, they showcase, first of all, uh, you know, a different perspective and then they'll change the perspective uh, in a scene where there is a conversation between uh, going on between two guys, there will be a view of the first person's face and then when the second person speaks, the camera will, the shot will change. So if you're trying to do that sort of things with multiple camera, you can add multiple shots. You can just uh, reduce the duration of uh, you know the shot by dragging uh, the thing here. Okay, so keep this checked. <coughs> Excuse me. So keep this checked, which says create a key when channel or properties change. <coughs> right? It will automatically create. So it will automatically create a keyframe uh, when the property of a particular object is changed, right? So press this little plus icon, uh, you know, between the two arrows in the transform one. So transform, I have explained this yesterday also. Everything in 3D revolves around transfer, uh, transform tools and materials. So transform. Uh, is basically describing the location, rotation, and scale of our component that we have selected in our scene by time, right? So I'm going to go all the way to 150th frame. I'm going to move my camera after. Rotate it also a little bit, right? Now you'll see that there is a keyframe that was automatically created in the 150th frame. Now, when you scroll the timeline, you can actually see your camera moving. Looks awesome, right? Now, you can save your sequence. Go to uh, Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint. Now, there would be a node called Event Begin Play. And if there is not, press right click type event begin so when the level will start this event will be called and uh, when the, uh, the, the you know uh, level starts i want this cutscene to play so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select my sequencer in uh, in the level so it says first sequence in the world outliner and i'm going to drag this out and i'm going to type play i'm going to uh, right click and i'm going to uh, search for play sequence. So right click, create a reference to first sequence and then drag it uh, and type play sequence. Wow. I don't know how uh, in my head all of these blueprints uh, sequence and order gets messed up for some reason. Okay, so I have event plug and play which connects to play 
function here and it is playing my force sequence. Compile it. Now, when we press play, it will play our animation first and then it will begin our level. Now, I, I don't want my movie to end here. I also want to showcase a scene where the mutant is moving forward and the camera is moving with it. Right? So how do I do that? I need to add another camera actor. I'm going to add camera. Back to the scene. I need to place it accurately where I want it to be. Okay, this looks good. Track active the sequencer, add camera actor two. Now I'm going to select my mutant also. I'm going to type in track after the sequencer, add enemy character. Now we can add uh, various animations to it. So I'm just going to add pocket. Right? So you can see it is going to perform. So what you can actually do is use the blueprint or what you can actually, uh, which is better to use is add the character. So I added my mutant character, right? So I deleted the character blueprint and I added the skeletal mesh that I originally imported, right? So blueprint is really good when you're trying to interact with other things. But when you're creating a movie, it's better to have a, a skeletal mesh. Okay. Now that we have that, I'm going to add it to our sequence. And you can see there is an animation tab on, uh, already. I'm going to select the walking animation. And this is going to continue after, it's going to start after uh, the original, you, you know, the previous shot ends. So our previous shot was ending at frame 150 or 149, right? So I'm going to add another camera cut. Where I'm going to do it, first of all, drag your seeker. So the red thing that you can drag with your mouse is called seeker. It uh, defines what frame you want a particular action to do, plus camera. Camera active two. So now what it's doing is on 150th frame the shot will change. And as you can see uh, from the camera, our mutant is working. Okay. Now that we uh, now we have that out of the way. We can change the location of because currently our uh, mutant is moving but it does not change its location right so how do we do that same way we did for the camera actor previously we create a transform keyframe which is going to define its uh, transform uh, values and then go to the 240th frame or the last frame that you want it to be and change its location so now we have a blue line showcasing its path. Now when you move your cursor or uh, move your seeker on your timeline, you can actually see that it's moving. It's actually moving really fast. So let me just press change. And okay. Now there is still one issue that uh, only the mutant is moving. Our camera is not moving. So we are going to do that. We are going to animate our camera now. So open your camera actor to, you know, by pressing this uh, plus icon here and add your first keyframe on 150 or, or 149, right? And uh, just go in the, to the last frame and press, and then, uh, okay, so, Right, so it has created automatically the last keyframe for us. You can view from the perspective of a particular camera by pressing this little uh, 
you know, camera button here, which says log camera actor to select this report. So this is how it will actually look. So if I play it by pressing space, the camera is following, you know, or, or the player is following, the character is following the camera. Okay. It looks really good. And that should be the end of my cutscene. Now when you press play, it will first showcase uh, indoors and then the mutant. And then uh, the level will begin. Right? So that is pretty much it uh, from a cinematic standpoint of view. You can, as you can see, there are a lot of tools and I don't have the time as well as uh, the energy as you can probably tell that, uh, uh, you know, my health is really not at its best right now. So um, if you want to learn more about it, maybe we can do a, a detailed oriented uh, course later down the line or, or what I can do is I can uh, just do one webinar on how to create an animated movie from scratch. Uh, completely, you know, with, with uh, from zero to one hundred, uh, just like you know, I can give an example of Spider-Man movie, or or if you've explored my channel more, I did uh, a zombie uh, dance off uh, movie, which was called uh, Dance to Survive, I guess. So that was a really hilarious concept in my mind, and I brought it life, brought it to life using this same tool that we just uh, had a hands-on experience with, and. Uh, I just want to cover one last aspect of uh, underline the core, which is called blueprints. Now I want to ask uh, all of you that if you're comfortable in, you know, me explaining more uh, complicated stuff, like it will it will get complicated eventually, just like the blueprints got. Even the basic implement of uh, blueprints is not really that simple. Right. So, and this thing is easier to code. Uh, so imagine what will happen when you do code. Um, that's why I prefer blueprints because it's simple. It's easy to debug uh, a problem. And if you want, I can refer you resources to learn user interface and detailed. Uh, I'll I'll uh, also link a masterclass that I recorded with uh, a different community. It's called DevScript. I, I did a whole masterclass with them. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them. And if you want, I can explain the user interface part also. I, I won't be able to fully explain it. I'll just be explaining a, a little bit. But I can explain. Because I guess I have already thrown a lot of information at you. So. Okay, so Michelle says I can share the resources later. Awesome. So I'll drop down all the resources that uh, you know made by me or by um, people that I look up to when sometimes I get a problem. Um, this right now, so you can view that. And um, you, sh uh, what you can do is you can create your own project by learning something. Uh, you know, uh, what you have learned during these two sessions, you can create a small project and you can um, you can share it on the WhatsApp group or you can post it somewhere and tag, uh, tag the organizers. You can tag me, right? So 